So for our first derivative, we're going to take the derivative of the function f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 4. First, what we want to do is just get an idea of what this function looks like. And over here, I've graphed the function. As you can see, it's just a parabola. Now, I'm going to be writing down a lot of different notation. It's very important that you understand all of the different notation because this is how you learn the language of mathematics. It's very easy to get confused in the future if you don't understand all the different types of notation. So the first thing we want to do is write down df dx. And this means that we're going to take the derivative of f with respect to x, the function x squared minus 2x plus 4. And this is equal to this, the same notation. It's just a different way of writing it. And this, this part here, this makes it more clear on what you're doing to f. In other words, d over dx, this is acting as an operator on the function f. So further writing that out, we get d over dx, the derivative of the function x squared minus 2x plus 4. And we again, we operate on this function by doing various rules such as power rules and constant multiple rules. Now what this x squared minus 2x plus 4 is, is it's actually just a string of different functions. So x squared is a function by itself. The negative 2x is a function by itself. And the 4 is a function by itself. So what we have to do is we take this derivative and we operate on each piece of the string. So rewriting that, we get the following. We get the derivative of x squared with respect to x minus the derivative of 2x with respect to x plus the derivative of 4 with respect to x. Now this process that I just showed is part of a theorem that is called the linearity rules. The linearity rules consist of the sum and difference rules and the constant multiple rule. Here specifically what we've done was we use the sum and difference rules, which is just we take each piece of the string and we take the derivative of each piece as just shown. Again, we have in this string sums and differences. Here we have a difference, here we have a sum. So we use the sum and difference rule. Now to operate first on the x squared, we're going to use the power rule. So to do that, we just take the exponent, drop it down next to the x, and then subtract 1 off the exponent. So we effectively get 2x to the first. Then going further, for this here, this term, we have a constant 2 multiplied by the variable x. So we use the constant multiple rule. The way we use that rule is we pull the 2 out and then we multiply by the derivative of x. And then I'll get to taking the derivative of the x in a little while. Going further, we want the derivative of 4. Now 4 is a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. So we can just write 0. Going further, we keep the 2x as it is because we've already taken the derivative of that. And then the derivative of x is going to just be 1. So if you just have the variable all by itself to the first power, 
because really there's a one right here, but it's usually not shown. It's just implied. It's going to be two times the derivative of x, which is just two times one, which is just two, and then plus zero, and that all equals in the end two x minus two. So 2x minus 2 is the derivative of the function x squared minus 2x plus 4. We've effectively created a new function, 2x minus 2, from the old function up here. What the function 2x minus 2 does is it allows us to plug in a number for x, and the value that we get back is the slope of the tangent line to the function x squared minus 2x plus 4. Over here what I've done is I've graphed the original function which is just the parabola and I've also graphed a new function 2x minus 2 which is the green line. Now if I want to plug in the value 3 into 2x minus 2 I use this notation up here on the right. We've already found the derivative which is 2x minus 2 and the bar with this little x equals 3 just means that we're going to plug in 3. So when we do that, we get 4. This 4 is the slope of a line. More specifically, it is the slope of the line that is tangent to this parabola, the original function, at the point x is equal to 3. Now that line is not shown yet on this graph. I'm going to show you how to find the line and then actually graph it. So what we have to do first is find the point that lies on the parabola x squared minus 2x plus 4 at the point x equals 3. So we just plug in 3 into this function and we get 7 so we have to use the point 3 7. We also have the slope of 4. So we have a point and a slope. We then use the point slope formula to find the equation of the line. We take y and we subtract y1 which is 7. That equals the slope m which is 4 multiplied by x minus x1. x1 is 3 and this just doing the algebra we get y is equal to 4x minus 12 plus 7 and that is equal to 4x minus 5 so y is equal to 4x minus 5 now what I've done was I've graphed the line y equals 4x minus 5 which is this blue line and at the point 3 7 right here and at the point x equals 3 this blue line has a slope of 4 this blue line is tangent to the parabola and that slope of 4 is exactly what we got over here earlier now just to recap we started with the function x squared minus 2x plus 4. We've used some rules to take derivatives and we have came up with a new function 2x minus 2. This new function 2x minus 2 essentially generates a bunch of different slopes. Particularly we were interested at the point x equals 3 so we plugged in 3 and we got 4 the slope we generated was 4. At the point x equals 3 on the graph x squared minus 2x plus 4, the slope of that tangent line is equal to 4, just as we demonstrated earlier in the graph. If you have any questions or comments, please post in the comments below and thank you for watching.